All right, so PID Toolbox version 0.58 is released, and I'm going to show you how to download it and get it running. The main reason for this release is to try to clarify and simplify some of the issues that people have been having with uh, versions since about 0.55 or so. In particular, 0.57, a lot of people have expressed some issues with getting it working. So you can see that I've laid out in detail exactly what you have to do for both Mac users and Windows users. So we're just going to run through this step by step. All right, step one, if you already have or had a working version of PID Toolbox, then you never have to reinstall MATLAB Runtime. I've mentioned this many times, but still, for whatever reason, a lot of people, when they when they come up across uh, an issue where it's not running properly, the first thing they think is to reinstall runtime. But if you've ever had a working version of PID Toolbox, you don't have to do that. It's very, very unlikely that this is the solution to your problem. Step two, after you download PID Toolbox, drop the enclosed folder, PID Toolbox version 0.58 folder, and all of its contents onto your desktop. Now, I used to say you can put this anywhere you want, but I'm going to be stressing this more often than not now to just drop it on your desktop just for simplicity and for ease of use, and it's less likely that things will go wrong. But it's important to know that um, I realized that when you first installed PID Toolbox using the My Installer app and, the, and installing Runtime, that it packages it all under the Applications folder in Macintosh, right? But since about version 0.55, we're unable to use that version of PID Toolbox that's located in the App folder because it, PID Toolbox requires read and write access to the main folder where it's located. And it, that's not possible in the uh, if you place it under places where Mac has that kind of control. So that's why I recommend just putting it on the desktop. And what you need to know about PID Toolbox is that it, it as a program itself is not really installed. It just It's just a standalone program. You can literally drag it anywhere and run it. So um, so when you when you download an, a later and later version of PID Toolbox, you're just basically grabbing this folder and just pl plopping it onto your desktop and just running the application that's inside it. Now, let's just leave that for step three. Do not place log files in the main folder. Now, I've kind of gotten ahead of myself here. This is something that I could have described later, but it's important to know that since version 0.55, you can't put log files into the main folder because one of the, the the nice things about the later versions of PID Toolbox is that it got rid of our uh, requirement that you had to previously you had to copy the black box decode programs into the folders wherever your log files were located. So we no longer have to do that. But in order for me to to be able to have this functionality, then we have to make sure that we we don't copy log files into the main folder and you'll see exactly why in a moment when I show you what happens when you run this but just keep that in mind okay and the second thing is the first time you run the PID Toolbox app you may see pop-ups telling you things like PID Toolbox can't open because the developer can't be identified this is all Macintosh stuff so it doesn't like non-Apple approved programs that's true for Betaflight etc 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 you know so so you're gonna have to often go into system uh, preferences for the first couple of times you try running it and the most important step here for for Macintosh is um, before PID Toolbox starts, so when you click it, you're going to see a help pop-up that will appear, and it's going to show you that when you click OK, that a navigator window will appear. Now, in previous the previous version, 0.57, I just had that navigator window pop up without any explanation as to what it was. Now, I tried to make this as obvious as possible, but if if you also make a mistake in this step, there's uh, a new button in the Mac version that says reset main directory and you can you can do this again so don't worry about if you make a mistake here you can always fix it but I want to show you what happens anyway okay so I'm gonna download and run this for the Mac just slide down here to assets I'm gonna click on PID Toolbox version 5.8 OS X I'm gonna go keep I'm gonna click that and there's our folder with so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this and I'm gonna drop it onto my desktop. Then I'm gonna go into the folder and you're gonna see runtime installer and main, okay? So if you if this is the first time installing PID Toolbox, of course you're gonna 
use the runtime installer. Otherwise, you're just going to go into the main folder and you're going to click the PID Toolbox app. Now, you're going to often get this where it says it can't be opened because it's from an un unidentified developer. So you're going to go to System Preferences, Security and Privacy. And you won't see anything here. As soon as you click OK, you're going to see this pop up. Then you're going to hit Open Anyway. Then you'll get this pop up again, and you go. And this will take a couple of seconds the first time running. And then we get this help dialog that pops up. So it says here, set up working directory. Before running PID Toolbox, we have to determine the location of your main directory. After you click OK, a navigator window will pop up. And what we're going to do is we're going to navigate to the location of the downloaded PID Toolbox version 0.58 underscore main folder. So that's the folder here that we just dropped onto our desktop. Okay, So I'm going to hit OK. And then here is our navigator window pop-up okay so it, it automatically pops up in shared folder here for me and we're just going to navigate to the desktop PID toolbox version 0.58 main okay and then we're just going to hit open and that's all there is to it now what you want to do is you want to confirm that you're in, that you actually have the main directory set up properly. So if you come down here to the right, you'll see this table that I've had here for quite a while, right? So you'll notice that you have your root directory. That should always be basically the, the root directory of your Macintosh, your main Mac drive. Your log file directory will get filled when you select log files. And your main directory should point to the location of that downloaded folder that you had. Now, if for whatever reason you did this incorrectly, things may not work right. And that's where a lot of people had trouble. So I've included this nice little button here called Reset Main Directory. And what this does is it basically runs you through that process again. So if you, for example, if you made a mistake here, you can just hit Reset Main Directory. You get your pop-up again. Just hit OK. And there's your and there's your navigator window so now we just go again and navigate to the location of our main folder okay so if if you had done that incorrectly that's all you have to do there now if you were curious what this is doing if you go into users into your mac hard drive and you go into users shared you'll notice that there's this little file called main dir on uh, hyphen ptb version 0.5 text if you go in there what you'll notice is this contains the actual directory that that pid toolbox uses to know where the main folder is okay and it's the same as what's shown here in the table so even in previous versions in fact i never made this made people aware of this and, and maybe that's where a lot of the confusion came from but i thought this was a level of complexity i didn't really need to tell people but but if you were curious it's held into this this file and in fact if i deleted this file right and run this again what you'll find is that PID Toolbox will go through the entire full process again. So if I open the app again now, you'll notice that this is this is gone. And you get this pop-up set up working directory. So again you hit OK and find your working directory, desktop, PDB58, main, open, and watch this. See? It lo it it populated this file again all right so that's all you have to do with pid toolbox the other it's just important to remember not to put log files in this main directory and here's why if i grab a log file you'll notice that those log files get pulled in here converted to csv files and then when once they're loaded all this is deleted you see that so that way, the original location of these log files, and, the, and, and well, the, the log files in their original location basically remain untouched. And they're just momentarily brought into this main folder, loaded in, and then they're, uh, 
then they're deleted from this this folder and cleaned up basically so it's kind of using it as a just a temporary working folder to pull things in and that way black box decode can do the magic and extract them and stuff in here rather than you having to copy these black box decode programs uh, in in wherever whatever folder your uh, your log files are placed you'll also notice now that we have this text file called log file directory and you'll notice here in the program that since selecting that log file we now have this line populated right now you can see here it says unable to set defaults if we now set hit set save settings you can see this gets populated at the same time we've also generated another file in here and this text file is what contains all of the information about all of your settings so you can see that in here right it's just I just wanted to let you be aware of what's actually happening so there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff that's working right here in this main folder and that's all because we properly set up this main directory fo um, this main directory in the beginning right okay so that's Macintosh and that's the more complex situation Windows is much simpler than that in Windows everything is the same except you don't have to set up these directories okay you don't have to set up a main directory or anything like that so windows is much easier in that sense but the same is true for windows in that you you should not put log files in the main folder they will get deleted okay so there's one more thing i wanted to mention when you download log files using the activate mass storage device mode in betaflight You'll notice in the Macintosh that you have that the files have this little lock next to them. And watch what happens when I download that file. So if I hit select, navigate to the desktop, and you can see there's our file with the little lock on it. Open. You'll see that it downloads it, it pulls out the CSV file and extracts the data, loads it into PID toolbox, everything is fine, but then it's unable to delete that locked file. Now, the reason this is a problem is because if you have anywhere else on your computer a file named btfl underscore 001.bbl, which is very likely you will if you haven't unlocked it, then you're going to have multiple versions of that, and when you go to load this in, they're going to conflict with the one that's currently stuck here in the main folder. And what always happens is it actually loads this one instead of the, the one that you really want to load. And that leads to a lot of confusion. I've seen a lot of people get really confused as to why their data doesn't look the way it should look. So just know that if you're pulling these files off into a, into a Mac, you're going to want to make sure that you click the Get Info and unlock those files really important and now another neat feature with PID toolbox is if if there is any of this these files left in there every time you hit the reset button in PID toolbox it now deletes those and clears them off okay so there you go that's uh, that's PID toolbox version 0 0.58 and I think this is probably the last ver 0.5 version I'm going to uh, I'm going to release and after this we're going to be going to uh, I'll be releasing 0 0.6 but I won't be doing that until there are some really significant additions and changes to the software so I hope that helps. Yeah.